Hello, welcome to episode 91 of the Epic Film Challenge to 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die. We're doing this month-long October horror series within the series that is the Epic Film Challenge 2, and now we're going to go one stage deeper. This is Inception. We're going to do another mini-series within the mini-series within the series. It's going to be a four-part look every day, every episode moving forward. Four Dracula films. Well, you say we when it's going to be mainly you. True, it is going to be mainly me. Um, but for this one, Connie is joining me. Even though she didn't watch the film we're about to talk about entirely, but she has seen it all the way through before. And so I wanted to get her involved in this one at least. The 1931 Dracula film. We're going to start from the mainstream beginning of Dracula. There were Dracula films before this. The earliest one was in 1921, which is called The Death of Dracula, a Hungarian silent horror film, which is now lost. And that's kind of funny because Bela Lugosi, who plays Dracula in the 1931 version, is Hungarian. Weird connection there. Of is course. He really? Yes. Oh, so his accent was actually real. Oh yes. <laughs> and uh, that's really cool. And of course, it's all based on Bram Stoker's original novel from 1897, uh, Dracula, which I should read someday. It'll be interesting to see the original book because this is a story that has been done so many times in so many different films. It gets remade and remade and remade. Then they do one recently, Dracula Untold or something with. Uh, Luke Evans. I'm sure you went to see it in the cinema. Yeah, that's the Walsh guy, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so they just keep keep doing these again and again and again. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like this one's a lot better than that one. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen it, and but yeah. Like, even even if it is old and the acting is right. obviously better nowadays <clears throat> for most of it, but still. Right. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. So the story of Dracula, uh, you know, you have this, this Count Dracula, this vampire who lives in his castle in Transylvania. Uh, can't be awake in the day. It's typical vampire stuff. He comes out at night, you know, and preys on people, you know, and all that he kind of stuff. He needs to sleep in his own soil. Yes, he needs to sleep in his own own soil, and he um, basically goes over to England, to London, brings these boxes with him on a ship that has the soil that he was buried in when he died, so that he can keep returning to it every night. And he starts to prey on people in London. And there are characters along the way who come in. There's a guy called Renfield who goes to meet Dracula at the beginning of the film, played by <laughs> Dwight Fry, and he. It's the best part. Mm, it's the second best part of the film for me. He Good. gives this he gives this manic performance um, as um, he basically gets bitten. Like he, he does get bitten, doesn't he? He gets he turned into a. I he, didn't see that part. I'm pretty sure he did because he throughout the film he's he really wants to eat bugs and insects and then he wants like rats and stuff. So I, it's kind of hazy because this film is 1931. Anytime Dracula does bite someone, we never see it. So, you know, he kind of leans in and then the camera pans away. And I kind of like that. It's kind of, it's a fun limitation because you don't get to see him bite. You never see fangs. You never see fang marks. They had no marks on their neck, even though they, they were supposed to. It. They mention it, but you, you never see it. So a lot is unseen in the film, and I kind of like that. Um, and Bela Lugosi is Dracula. Um, I mean, the story, you've either seen the film or you haven't, and it's, I don't feel like the story is that that compelling. Like, he's going around, he's... he's biting women and stuff like that, and then it only gets really interesting once a certain Van Helsing comes into the picture and starts to figure out who this Count Dracula person is and that he might be this legendary Nosferatu, this is this vampire, and he starts to figure out who that it might be him. That's when the film gets really interesting. Wait, is Nosferatu is Dracula? Dra is Dracula, yeah. So it's a different word for it? Or I guess so, yeah. I, I guess it is a different word. I'm not sure whether Count Dracula is like his name that he uses to disguise himself as being Nosferatu. I don't know. I don't know the, the story that well. So did he have a Hungarian accent in other movies as well? Bela Lugosi. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So yeah. he actually sounds like Dracula. He does, yeah. And that's another thing I want to mention so <laughs> is that that is the iconic version of Dracula that will always be... I mean, you have the silent Nosferatu, which I will be talking about in the coming uh, videos, but... And that has a sort of, that has a memorable look, but Bela Lugosi's his, his voice is so distinctive, and from a kid I knew I am Dracula. Like you just know that's who Dracula. He speaks like that, and it's so weird. That's pretty good. <laughs> and it's so weird because um, he was this Hungarian actor. He came over and he started playing Dracula on the stage. He started doing it in plays, and he was very successful. Even Van Helsing in the movie was the same actor who did it on the stage. And Bela Lugosi heard the Universal making the film, and he's like, please, let me play Dracula in the film. And he really had to lobby for it. He even said, look, pay me look, nothing to do it. He got paid a very low amount to do the film because huh. he wanted to do it so much. Cool. Um, and I think he's great. I think he's such, it's cause he's just such a weird, you know, the way he talks, the way he... he is Dracula. He is Dracula, and it's just such an amazing thing where it's someone so just... It's so funny how he, he made that accent then. 
We didn't make it. He had it. Yeah, but I mean, he he made what we consider right. Yeah, the accent of Dracula. Exactly. Yeah, that is actually his accent, and yeah. it's him. I mean, that's what he's supposed to be from Transylvania, but you know, still just yeah. But that's who everybody impersonates when when yeah. they want to say I'm Dracula. You know, exactly. you always say it like that, and it's with that. You know, yeah. And it's great. And it's just such an iconic performance. The way that they light him, the way that he's filmed, and I just think he's he's brilliant. Um, and yeah, I think he's the best part of the film. I mean, uh, Dwight Fry as Renfield uh, has been bitten by Dracula. He comes back to London with him, and he just starts going crazy, and he's laughing, and his eyes are going wild. And I said three years ago when we first watched it, and I said it last night. He reminds me of um, well, you even you even said it. I said it before Un you said it today. Unprompted, you said it. Um, and I don't remember you saying it last time. Yeah, um, we probably said it in our review that we did uh, years ago. We did a little video, but no memory of it though. Yeah, um, he he really is a bit like Smeagol Gollum from the the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films. Even some um, of the lines are the same, like nice fat spider and I suppose yeah, and master, master. Right, true. You yeah, know? yeah, it's like that, and it's just it's not exact, but you 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 definitely see these these glimpses, yeah. and I just I we tried to, I tried to look it up, couldn't see anything, but I. I feel sure that Andy Serkis has seen that film and, and maybe got some ideas. Like even a bit where he's crawling across the floor and like the, the eyes. Such a, a wild, mm. manic performance. His laughter, though. I know it's supposed to be really creepy and stuff, <laughs> but it's just so funny. Yeah. Every time he made that, it's. Eee! I don't know. I, I can't it's, even do it. It's but quite it's unhinged. So funny. I really like it. It's quite unhinged. And then it's just this crazy eyes looking at you like. <laughs> and it's. He's entertaining yeah. to watch, regardless. I thought he was great, because he starts out as this really serious yeah. British guy with a hat. Yeah. And he's like, oh, oh, there you are, Dracula, you know, and it's just... Yeah, he, he's warned from he's... going He's warned from going to Dracula's castle, don't go there, the locals are telling him, and he's like, no, I'll be fine. And yeah. then he, and then he finds it, and uh, that's another thing, the production design is incredible, and mm. it, it's kind of a double-edged thing, because... <laughs> You get to the castle, Dracula's castle, and it just looks incredible. Like they've done these matte paintings to make it look humongous, but they've also built these huge sets with these well, massive... These matte paintings? I yeah. maybe they found a building that looked like that or something. Uh, no, you can kind of tell like that, that like one shot is a matte painting and they've extended the set. But then obviously you can tell it's really a huge staircase that they've built, so I can see where they've done it. But it's like it's seamless. I can't. Oh, you mean the, the staircase down to the basement or the staircase the main, at the front door? The main staircase in the the front hall of the oh, yeah, when okay. they when he first comes the in, and, and he walks down and says, "I am Dracula." Yeah. And just the way he speaks, Dracula, like you just he'll pause, and then continue like just weird cadence and everything. Well, it's supposed to be the suspense, right? Yeah, and the production design. It's it's a double edged thing because there's bits where you see spiders crawl up the wall, and it just looks like like a kids' TV show. It just looks terrible. It's just like a little dummy, you know, and a, a little fake spider. You can find real spiders. <laughs> and it just it's like oh, and then there are bits where the bats come in, and, and it's like you can just tell it's on a wire, yeah. but. There is moments where the bat is flying outside the window and it's supposed to be Dracula. I quite like those bits, but some of them, they look quite fake and, and hokey. But then you have just the way it looks. The lighting, it's always dark. It's always gloom. Well, not gloomy, they light up his eyes, actually. They have some kind of like... Spotlight, like a very thin, just like, yeah, just on right, the eyes. Just on his eyes. It must have really hurt him. That's probably why he's squinting so badly. <laughs> it's like, oh, get the flashlight on my yeah. eyes. Uh, and they also have that on the bat. If you notice, when it's flying outside the window, that, no. the the eyes are glowing uh, in a bit. Yeah. Um, but like the the lighting is so good, the way that it's it just it just looks great. And then there's the atmosphere, which is helped by the way it looks, but also, and I think, and I've said this before, but I think this is probably the the biggest example of an early sound film that is still holding on to the silent era in some way. There's no soundtrack, and there are literally scenes. So it's the opposite of a silent movie. What do you mean? Well, so movies have soundtracks. True, they, yeah. They have music, but no speaking. This one has all speaking they, and sound. At the time, at the time, they felt like it would be stupid to play music over a scene if it wasn't within the actual framework of the film. Like if someone was in the background playing the piano, you know, which mm. takes you back to media study. I think it's like diegetic and non-diegetic music. I can't remember which one is which, but so they didn't have a, a score. They've since done a score, the great Philip Glass um, composed a score, but I haven't listened to it, so on the Blu-ray we just watched the original non-soundtrack version. And there's bits where Dracula's coming into this room and there's just nothing, there is no sound, and it just it makes me uncomfortable. And I really like the tension that that brings, uh, whether it was intended or not. 
I didn't notice that there was no soundtrack in the movie yeah. until some character says, like, it's that person is obeying Dracula, mm. but Dracula isn't really there, but that person can hear him yeah. and go, like, yes, mm -hmm. I will, or something like that. Yeah. And it's, it, I was thinking that, oh, some really eerie music would make that a lot more creepy. Uh, but I thought maybe they just didn't put music in there. But throughout the rest of the movie, I didn't really notice. Yeah. But I wasn't really paying attention this time, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's in interesting how there was no music, but it just, there's some parts where there was just literally nothing and it, the sound just drops out and I'm, I'm just like, heart's going a bit faster. I don't know, like, I, I don't find the film scary or anything. It's kind of creepy and stuff, but... It's just something really effective about that silence for some reason. It just felt like it was half of a silent film in a way. Um, Van Helsing is another great character. The actor who played him was brilliant. Uh, and I found out he was American. I, I felt for sure he was European or something because he had a, a weird accent. I don't know what accent it's supposed to be. And I love that I can't pinpoint it. But like he's got these glasses and he's just I think he's brilliant. Um, and how he figures he's old, out... though. Yeah, and I always thought Helsing would be younger. Like, uh, who is it? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, that's a bit. Like, he's not really a Hugh Jackman. He that no, guy but... won't do any stunts. <laughs> it's a bit different. It's a bit different film than the Van know, Helsing. No, but I, I mean, like, yeah. when I hear of Van Helsing, you, you're thinking of someone who will fight vampires, you know. And, well, I don't know what the original... Run around, but that guy, he doesn't look like he can run anymore. I, I, I'm pretty sure the original character was just someone who was very smart and figured it out, and the Hugh Jackman version is just a, an actionized version of the original you character. You see that movie again? Yeah, it's, pretty, it's a fun <laughs> film. It's a fun one, Van Helsing. It's not great, but it's just good, good stuff. So, Dracula, anything else we can talk about, really? Um, I noticed the uh, Operation Theater. Yeah. Which is what they used to call it, mm -hmm. and it really was a theater but i noticed when they were doing that surgery or whatever yeah uh everybody in the room who was watching the, it was like a what would you like call a, it like a tiered like stands you know yes. just like a but they were obviously told to stay completely still and i started like squinting like is that a picture <laughs> Because cause they were kind of like grained out in a way, they and might the have focus been. one was on, no, because when you got the close, that was when the camera was up above, yeah. probably among them, Yeah. and then when it was closer to the um, surgeons, surgeons, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could see behind them, one of them was like slightly moving, almost like, oh, I've been still for a while, mm -hmm. or whatever, and I was like, really? All of those people were real people, they weren't painted, well, maybe it would take longer to paint them, but it just, it was really impressive, hmm. because it made you focus entirely on the, you know, the scene itself. Yeah. It was just a cool thing to notice. Mm. It has a, a weird pace to it, it's not a very long film, in fact I heard that a lot of stuff was cut out at the last minute and the director, Todd Browning, who I've reviewed two films for already now, Freaks and uh, I believe it was The Unknown. Uh, I really like his films, but um, apparently like his final version would have been quite different, and so maybe that's why it's quite short. I think it's like an hour and 15 minutes, maybe? He did Freaks. Yes, guy. he's the guy who directed Freaks, yeah. yeah. Which he made after this, but his career didn't last very long after Freaks, unfortunately. Um, well, this one was better than Freaks. And, and, there's also so, yeah, and there's also some kind of like controversy over like whether he even directed much of this. I don't know, but either way... Um, it has a weird pace to it, and, and I do get bored at times, because it's very slow, and with the silence, and the, you know, and just people talking. And also, I think the main thing is the, the, the side characters. There's, there's women who don't really get set up as, as much as I'd like, because halfway through the film I'm thinking, wait, who's that? Who's this girl now? Who was the one who got bit, and now she's come back? And someone will get bit, and they'll be like, oh, she's dead! And then she'll be there in the next scene, and it's not really explained that obviously she's not dead, and they realize that she's not dead. And I'm just like, who's that girl? And then um, Harker, the guy who, he just was a bad actor. You know, just didn't really, you know, he's the boyfriend, you know. Oh, right. He just... He, he, I didn't think she was that great either. No, you know, they, they weren't great, and, and he wasn't bad, he just wasn't good. He was just so bland, and when you have a great character like Van Helsing and Dracula being done so well by those two actors, and then everyone else around them just... Oh, and also, of course, Renfield. Um, it just kind of... It, it makes those scenes without Dracula and Ran Helsing drag a little bit for me. I still think it's a great film. It has this unique mood and feel to it. And it has that great performance from Bela Lugosi and 
Dwight Fry as Renfield. Um, is it a film you want to see before you die? You go first, obviously, it's a yes from you. <laughs> yeah, definitely it's a yes. It's a horror classic, you know. Um, well, yeah, that's that's the only reason, but I mean, the real classic is the 20... 22. 22 one, isn't it? I, because I, it, it, it it's the first one. The original. Well, but this is the classic because it has the classic I am Dracula. And it's a great performance. And you it's know. Lugosi, is that what you said? Bella Lugosi, yeah. Lugosi. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Lugosi or no. something. Um, it's, it's got his voice in it, you know? It's got his uh, acting. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you might have the first Gollum in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it has strong performances from the main characters, and it's it just has the great atmosphere from the way it looks to the, the, the silence and everything, and it just the, the good far outweighs the bad for me in this film. Is it a film you must see before you die? Uh, yes, I guess. Yes, yes, I guess. I'll put that on the website. Yes, I guess. Yeah, but dot, dot, I, I dot. mean, I don't know. It's like, well, the life is different for us because we like movies, but like, I, I don't know many people that would want to watch this unless they're a movie enthusiast. So if you're a movie enthusiast, right. definitely. Um, I, I just I don't know. It, it's, I don't I don't know who I'm recommending it for. That's, it's so I just be just generally just try and clear your head of any thoughts of oh is it for horror fans is it for movie fans is it for really serious movie fans obviously obviously really serious movie fans they need to watch all the films you know. Well it, yeah. But then the general movie going public it's tough it's tough I just I just have to go on what I feel is worth someone watching. Regardless, I would like to show it to my class, and so I guess you. But it's not like I would force them, like I'm forcing Alien on them on Sunday, right? Which they hadn't seen, so <laughs> I, oh, I guess yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I guess. Okay. That's my answer. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's a yes from me. It's a yes, I guess, from Connie. Uh, the next one we'll be talking about is another Dracula film that is also in the book, and it is 1958, I think, the Hammer horror film. Dracula or the Horror of Dracula starring Christopher Lee in the title role. Connie may or may not join me for that one. Hang on, if you're doing this, does that mean you're going to watch Dracula Untold? No, we're just doing films from the book. This is the epic film challenge. <laughs> you're never going to watch it then. No, I might watch it at some point. You have know. to watch it, it's a Dracula movie. You're I'm doing not, it now. I'm not, yeah, I'm you doing it You said you were doing a separate series within the series. It's not a series, series. Yeah, yeah, but it's within the epic film challenge, so it has to be in the book, A Thousand More Movies, You Must See Before yeah, You Die, and I'm guaranteeing that Dracula... Yeah, series will include things outside of the book. Yeah, that's our own personal series, where we're not doing videos. Dracula... He's gonna watch it. I might be forced He's to. Welsh. Uh... You owe it for your country. Okay, so... This video has gone way off the beaten track, so thanks. I changed my mind. It's a definite yes, you have to watch it. Okay, well that's good at least. <laughs> and she may join me tomorrow for the, the Hammer Horror Dracula, uh, and then we will do the two Nosferatu films. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Or well, I'll see you in the next one. Maybe we'll both will. If we can watch it on Saturday, maybe. If we yeah. can watch it on Saturday, yeah. maybe, yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Lily. Really?